because there's a lot, uh, there's not enough reporting really on what the impact there was. Well, first, Andrea, I want to thank you so much and MSNBC for really paying attention to what's happening in the U.S. Virgin Islands. John have really taken a major hit and have quite a bit of devastation. Um, as you are aware and from the meteorologist on St. Thomas on our north side, Irma came up within 20 miles of the island. The island experienced plus 150 mile winds, even though FEMA I was at their headquarters yesterday. They have moved there, they are about to move individuals out of Harvey and bring them down to the Virgin Islands and to San Juan to work on that. Um, and Speaker Ryan was passing through the halls just a few moments ago and informed me that the Senate has added on an additional 7.5 billion to that package when it comes back to the House. The U.S. Virgin Islands were also hit hard again. For more on that, I'm joined by Congresswoman Stacey Blaskett, who represents the U.S. Virgin Islands. I, I mean, I, I got to tell you, I, I, Congresswoman, I can't believe you and I continue to meet and talk about this. What's going on? Have you, have you had a chance to check back in and see how things are in the Virgin Islands? was just texting with the uh, general of our National Guard. Um, you know, we, as you know, Stephanie was down on the island of St. Thomas and St. John last week, which hit, were hit by Irma. And now we're having to deal with Maria that hit the island of St. Croix. In Katrina, the people of Louisiana were given 100% for Medicaid to support them for several years. The Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico have, hurricane, have matches in Medicaid funding that only matches the richest states in this country. It is set as an arbitrary 45% that we have to pay, while the closest in demographic to us in terms of our economy only has to pay less than 20%. For Medicaid. This has left our infrastructure vulnerable. Uh, for many years we have attempted to change our FMAP, the amount of money that we receive. Additionally, our hospitals have been petitioning CMS to be able to change the rebasing uh, for which they are reimbursed for Medicaid. Since the 1980s they have been requesting this. This has left our infrastructure vulnerable. Our schools as well the Department of Interior has not received the funding that they have requested from this body to maintain our infrastructure within our schools. We have lost nine schools in this hurricane, much of it due for weakening infrastructure. Our needs are great and it's partly a result of issues that have been long-standing. 
Our hospitals have been chronically underfunded for decades. Our Medicaid is a block granted at an amount that has no relationship to the local needs. So Congress shares some responsibility for the level of devastation due to chronic neglect, a benign neglect of the territories. That includes this committee as well. In the beginning of 2017, our Virgin Islands of the United States commemorated 100 years as part of America. We remembered the sacrifices of our African ancestors and with pride told the many stories of their remarkable resilience and all Virgin Islanders' contribution to our great country and our islands. I also talked quite frankly about the neglect of the federal government to the territories and engaged in the fight to end disenfranchisement. In September, we were struck by two of the most powerful storms ever recorded in the Atlantic. Lives were lost and our community has been undoubtedly changed forever. We lost possessions and suffered damages to our homes, schools, business, and other critical infrastructure. But we did not lose our amazing spirit. We were bent, but far from broken. And like our ancestors before us, we showed our resilience. We gathered ourselves, rolled up our sleeves, extended a hand up to our neighbors, and got to work rebuilding a better and more resilient Virgin Islands. And that is because we are VI Strong.